and the superintendent joins us live this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. I warned you in the break. We're playing devil's advocate this morning, <laughs> sir. So we have a lot of questions about this. Our viewers have a lot of questions about this. First and foremost, do you even know how many school employees in the state are not vaccinated? Well, the individual gets to keep that private um, <clears throat> under the current framework until this kicks in. And so we don't know down to the numbers. Uh, we survey districts pretty regularly. We're very confident for the teacher core. It's greater than 70 percent statewide. Statewide, you think it's over 70 percent. So even if we uh, believe that and we go with 30 percent, um, not even knowing at this point, how can you say we're going to fire uh, all these people October 18th, if they haven't received a vaccine, without even knowing really what that might mean for school districts? Well, we do know the numbers. I mean, if it's 30 percent, it's 20 to 25,000 folks, uh, but wow. we're not going to fire them. Most of them are going to get vaccinated and then they're going to qualify for a medical exemption, which is typically five to seven percent of folks who legitimately qualify. And then some of them are going to take the opportunity to grab a religious exemption, which is real. I mean, it's a real opportunity for folks based on their faith and based on their practices. And so we don't anticipate losing a lot of staff, but, but there might be some. Well, let me ask you about that religious exemption quick. The state is given an exemption for people with sincerely held religious beliefs. Riddle me this. How is the state going to determine whether someone's religious beliefs are sincerely held? Are you going to check their church attendance? No, in fact, that's what we're working right now <clears throat> with the attorney general's office. I, I don't we don't have a core of people who go check on sincere beliefs or, you know, deep convictions. And so I, I really do believe this is about employees attesting to that and being sincere about that and having integrity about that. But really, we, we are going to rely on them to be uh, forthright about that. And that's why that exists. That's what the courts expect to see is this opportunity. And and folks, I think will do it with great integrity. Now, you said 30% uh, would be about 25,000 people, and you believe most of them will give in and get vaccinated. But if they haven't already, what makes you believe that? Well, I think most of them will grab one of the three options, so okay. I don't know that it'll necessarily be the first. Um, I, there's a lot of folks in our state, uh, almost everyone wants to do the right thing, and they follow the law. They do it judiciously because we're part of a community, and right now, that's not a requirement of them. And for a lot of people, they say, you know, it's not mandated of me and I have questions and concerns. And so for right now, I'm not doing it. We keep showing evidence of the science, the health communities come forward, the doctor community, the pediatricians, um, obviously lots of folks. And now the pressure is on. Now you really do have to make this hard choice. And I know it is a tough one, but that kind of opportunity will push a lot of folks to go finally get some questions answered. And I believe the vast bulk of them will go get the vaccination or they'll seek uh, one of the exemptions. So you said in your remarks yesterday, shutdowns have impacts, referring to possible shutdowns because of COVID-19 outbreaks in schools. But come October 18th, you know, if we have a big chunk of that 25,000 that refuses to take uh, an exemption that maybe is not real or refuses to get the vaccines, can you guarantee that we won't be so short on teachers or bus drivers or kitchen staff that you don't have shutdowns as a result of that? No, we can't guarantee that. <clears throat> it's a really good and tough question, and that's what I always like about you. We can't guarantee that, especially in some of our rural communities. Um, bus drivers in particular are really hard to get, so this is a very real challenge. We weighed that. Uh, the alternative is we have 30 or 40 percent of people who aren't vaccinated, and we go to school and we see what we've seen in other parts of the country, which we immediately have huge outbreaks, big quarantines, and we'll be shutting down as a result of that. And as you saw last year, if it gets bad enough, those are long term shutdowns with big impacts on workers, on students, on families. So we've weighed all that and we think this is the best course of action. Please go get vaccinated. So obviously a lot of these uh, people impacted are union employees. I know that the Washington Education Association has said if public health officials want to do this, they support that um, as a union. But still there's this question of collective bargaining. So behind the scenes, is there anything that needs to be done or worked out to make this binding for those union workers? Well, it becomes the effect of law. <clears throat> Governor provisions are law, so that's not the question. It will be a requirement uh, with the two exemptions. There are some things, so folks will say, you know, given that school's starting the next week or two and this doesn't kick in, I've got time. I need time off, for example, to go get my shot or my second shot. There will be some potential impacts to the bargaining, but it's not a question of should, can they or can't they or will they or won't they. The power of the law will lead, and then it's what impacts, and it's usually time off kinds of issues. Okay, so you don't believe that collective bargaining factors into whether employees are going to have to do those? No, I do not. 
Um, on the private school front, I know you are the head of the public school system, but you know, you guys can't turn around and fire private uh, school employees who don't do this, correct? You only have the power as a state to fire public school employees who don't do it. Yeah, my request to the governor was in my scope, which is public schools, and then he gets to consider more broadly. And he did, you know, obviously include privates, higher education, early learning. So he went broader than my request, which is uh, understandable. Those employers, those private school employers, they will have to comply with the law, which means they've got an HR function that'll have to enforce it. Gotcha. Let me just ask you this. You know, I know you made your case yesterday for this um, for this requirement. I've already heard from teachers who are upset. I've already heard from teachers who love their kids, who love their jobs, but say, Brandy, there is no way that I'm gonna get this vaccine. I haven't got it by now for a reason. So if they're not willing to claim an exemption that isn't true, I, I'm sure people can claim an exemption uh, just to keep their jobs, but if they're not willing to do that out of principle, what do you say to those employees who you're going to, as you put, fire in October? Well, they're deeply held beliefs uh, or practices. There's a lot of language to the it, exemption. It seems to me, can I be frank, so. Superintendent, it seems to me that you want people to claim an exemption even if they don't actually have one to keep their jobs. I think, I think I agree with you that there are no forces out there that are gonna force people to go document the church they belong to or get a signature from a member of the clergy or their synagogue or their mosque. There, there's no role for us in that. We will listen to employees who say, I have a deeply held conviction about this for practice and I don't take shots or I'm not taking the shot. And I, I'm gonna honor that. I, if I get that scope and I believe I have it, uh, we will honor that. So it's okay to lie. It's okay for them to lie. The superintendent of public instruction is saying, if oh, you have to lie to keep your job, lie. No, listen to me. The language that is used by attorneys in this says a deeply held religious conviction or practice so it's called a religious exemption, but it has this ability for folks to sort of value this decision, not necessarily based on a religious affiliation, not belonging to a particular church. That's why we're working the language out with the attorney general's office. Some people say, well, that's just a philosophical exemption. And I, and I think in many ways, that's that fine line that exists, but it's been described as a religious exemption under the governor's proclamation. It has the ability for people to say, I just don't do vaccines. And we're going to honor that. So no, we're not going to fire a bunch of teachers. They do have to walk right up to that line, though, and say, am I not going to get this despite the science because of this deep conviction I have? And if that's their answer, then that's OK. I think it's going to have tens of thousands of folks say, I need to finally get this shot. It's safe and it's the right thing to do for kids in my community and my fellow educators. And that's what we're looking for. Get folks to take that next last examination, meet with their doctor and make that ultimate decision here. Well, that's really interesting. Well, I, I am sure I join everyone watching in uh, being very eager to see what happens on October 19th. Uh, Superintendent of Public Instruction, Chris Reichdahl, we appreciate you joining us this morning. And I don't envy your position, by the way. Let the record yeah. show. <laughs> I appreciate that. Tough things, but we're trying to do this as a whole community, and I know it's hard on folks. Thanks. Right. Thanks for being here.